In her 2011 memoir, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother, Amy Chua recounts her journey of raising her two American daughters in accordance with traditional Chinese cultural values. As a Yale law professor specializing in globalization and ethnic conflict and a second-generation Chinese-American married to a Jewish husband, Chua's strict parenting approach is deeply influenced by her own upbringing, which often clashes with her husband's perspectives. Chua's memoir achieved widespread recognition as a New York Times bestseller, popularizing the term Tiger Mom to describe her parenting style. Her methods sparked intense debates, drawing both criticism and support from parents worldwide. The memoir is structured into three sections, chronicling Chua's experiences in raising her daughters, Sophia and Louisa, Lulu. It also delves into the complexities of navigating personal and cultural differences within her intercultural marriage with her husband, Jed. Throughout the memoir, readers witness the unfolding of Sophia and Lulu's childhoods, with a blend of chronological accounts and glimpses into Chua and Jed's own upbringing. The narrative also features Chua's thoughtful reflections on the sociological implications of parenting in a racially charged context. Chua's parenting approach involves a rigorous regimen of academics and music for her children. As the narrative unfolds, readers see the distinctive personalities of Chua and her daughters mirroring their respective zodiac signs. Amy, the tiger, emerges as fearless and formidable, while Sophia, the monkey, is portrayed as contemplative and diligent. Lulu, the boar, embraces confrontation and stands her ground. A telling anecdote from Lulu's early years highlights her fearless disposition. At the age of three, when Lulu misbehaved, Chua imposed a stern punishment by sending her outside into the freezing cold. Lulu, unyielding in her determination, chose to endure the cold rather than give in to her mother's demands, setting the stage for her strong-willed personality. Chua's memoir provides a captivating glimpse into the complexities of modern parenting, cultural clashes within a family, and the enduring debate surrounding strict parenting methods. In part one of the memoir, Chua delves into her family's history to support her assertion of a three-generation model. According to this model, the first generation of immigrants embodies hard work, the second generation achieves high success, and the third generation often experiences a decline in their circumstances due to privilege. Chua's grandparents immigrated to the Philippines and achieved wealth. Her parents, seeking educational opportunities, moved to Boston, where her father pursued a Ph.D. at MIT before becoming a professor at Purdue and Berkeley. Chua and her sisters represent the second generation, marked by their high-achieving nature. However, Chua expresses concerns about her daughter's future. Born into privilege, she fears they won't need to exert the same level of effort as their grandparents or herself. Additionally, she worries about the influence of their American peers, whom she perceives as indulged and disrespectful to their parents. The decisions made in Chua and Jed's careers impact their ability to enforce Chua's strict parenting style. By the time Sophia reaches the age of five, Chua initiates her into the demanding Suzuki method of piano lessons, actively participating alongside her daughter. Chua, a demanding coach, pushes Sophia relentlessly, believing that the pursuit will only become enjoyable once a high level of mastery is attained. Simultaneously, Chua experiences a setback in her professional life, failing to secure her first interview at Yale Law School, where her husband teaches. However, she receives a teaching offer from Duke University. Consequently, Chua and her daughters relocate to North Carolina while her husband visits on weekends. This arrangement places significant strain on their family relationships. Recognizing the toll this separation takes on her family, Chua eventually decides to move to NYU to reduce the distance from her husband. However, her daughters face challenges adapting to new schools in this transition. Stubborn Lulu intentionally misbehaves during an interview for an exclusive preschool, and Sophia struggles to fit in and socialize within a public school setting. Finally, Chua's journey takes a turn when she receives an offer from Yale Law School, leading to the joyful reunion of her family in New Haven. Chua passionately coaches her daughters towards both musical and academic excellence, but the demanding training schedule often leads to disagreements between her and Lulu. Initially, Lulu embarked on piano lessons, but in a bid to reduce sibling rivalry, Chua switches her to the violin. The sisters ultimately deliver a stunning joint performance at a grand gala event, reinforcing Chua's confidence in her parenting approach. 
Yet, the girls encounter other challenges as they grapple with their diverse racial identity, particularly following a trip to China that leaves them feeling less connected to their Chinese heritage. This journey also highlights the stark differences in Chua's upbringing compared to her husband's. Nevertheless, Sophia's remarkable success continues to bolster Chua's faith in her parenting style. At the age of 10, Sophia receives an invitation for her first major solo performance, prompting Chua to host an extravagant celebration in her honor. As time passes, Chua recognizes the need to employ different parenting methods for her daughters, given their distinct personalities. Sophia proves obedient, while Lulu tends to be rebellious. When Lulu refuses to perform a piano piece correctly, Chua resorts to various forms of discipline in an attempt to motivate her. Despite Jed's attempts to persuade Chua to be more lenient, she persists in pushing Lulu. Eventually, after several weeks of persistent effort, Lulu flawlessly executes the piece, serving as an illustration of the perceived effectiveness of Chua's strict Chinese parenting. Nevertheless, the girls voice their grievances about their mother's stringent rules, which include no sleepovers, rigorous daily instrument practice, and a ban on having pets. In an unusual departure from her traditional parenting style, Chua dangles a new incentive in front of Lulu to motivate her practice. The promise of a family dog if Lulu excels in her upcoming recital. This marks a significant shift from Chua's typical approach, which typically involves threats and punishments. Part 2 commences with the family's acquisition of a Samoyed they affectionately name Coco. Chua's hopes soar when the family acquires their second Samoyed, Pushkin, inspired by the breed's renowned accomplishments. However, her enthusiasm takes a hit when she discovers that Samoyeds aren't ranked among the most intelligent dogs. Undeterred, she attempts to apply her stringent parenting techniques to Coco's training, but to her dismay, it proves ineffective. While the family embarks on extravagant vacations worldwide, Chua remains steadfast in her insistence that her daughters practice their musical instruments daily. A poignant moment arises when Chua's mother-in-law, Florence, falls ill with leukemia and subsequently passes away. This tragedy prompts Chua to reflect on her relationship with her daughters. She recalls a time when she rejected the birthday cards they had crafted at ages 4 and 7, believing they hadn't put in enough effort. Chua's expectations for her daughters continue to escalate, fueled by her determination to secure Lulu a spot at Juilliard and have Sophia perform at Carnegie Hall. The family's journey leads them to upstate New York, where Lulu meets with an exclusive teacher, and Chua hires a professional sound engineer to record Sophia's Carnegie Hall audition. Sophia clinches the competition and is slated to perform at Carnegie Hall the night before Lulu's Juilliard audition. Sophia delivers a stellar performance, while Lulu, battling food poisoning, impresses in her audition. Despite not gaining acceptance to Juilliard, one of the judges invites Lulu to train at her private studio. The sisters are later invited to perform in Budapest, where Lulu grapples with tantrums but still manages to excel. In part 3, the family adds a second Samoyed, Pushkin, to their household, further filling Chua's schedule. She becomes increasingly involved in micromanaging nearly every aspect of her daughter's lives, all while flourishing as a professor and frequently traveling for her work. Chua intensifies Lulu's violin practice, leading to an act of rebellion as Lulu decides to cut her hair. As their relationship strains under the weight of Chua's insistence on more rigorous practice, Lulu's resistance becomes evident. She even declines to offer a toast at her father's birthday party, though she reluctantly agrees to perform the violin at her own bat mitzvah. Amidst this tumultuous period, Chua's sister, Katrin, receives a devastating diagnosis of leukemia and immediately commences treatment in Boston. Unfortunately, the initial round of chemotherapy proves unsuccessful, necessitating a critical bone marrow transplant. Neither Chua nor her other sister is a suitable match, but eventually, a donor is located, and the transplant succeeds. Katrin's recovery allows her to attend Lulu's bat mitzvah, where Lulu delivers a captivating violin performance. The family embarks on a journey to Russia, where an incident involving Lulu's public tantrum prompts Chua to contemplate her daughter's relationship with the violin. She reflects on the violin symbolism within their family and even recalls her own mother advising her to be less harsh with Lulu. Ultimately, Lulu decides to pursue the violin recreationally rather than competitively, replacing Saturday violin lessons with tennis. Meanwhile, Sophia continues to excel in her musical pursuits. 
Chua and Jed host a dinner for distinguished judges, and Sophia dazzles them with her piano prowess. Lulu achieves her first victory in a tennis tournament, but despite her promise not to intervene, Chua finds herself attempting to exert control over Lulu's tennis career. The memoir concludes with Chua maintaining her unwavering confidence in her parenting choices, despite the challenges and setbacks they have faced. In the afterword, the narrative extends to the seven months following the book's publication, during which the reception remains highly controversial. Nonetheless, both Sophia and Lulu proudly participate in interviews, staunchly supporting their mother's parenting approach. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.